Member Statements. The member for Toronto, St. Paul's. Good morning, Speaker. Today I'm rising on behalf of a wonderful constituent of mine, and her name is Sherry. First, I want to remind folks here that in Canada, approximately 3 million people are battling eating disorders. Sherry is one of the 500,000 or so people in Ontario who are struggling with her own battle. I want to make it clear in this House that we need additional supports for eating disorders. Sherry has been struggling for roughly 30 years, and I'll explain to you the brunt of the struggle. We only have 20 publicly funded beds in Ontario for people who are critically ill enough on death's door to be hospitalized. Speaker, I know the government has made some investments in eating disorders, and I appreciate the effort. But for many families, too many of which are in St. Paul's and across Ontario, we need more. We need additionally public funded beds. We need staff to support patients in those beds. It is, it is absolutely heart-wrenching to know that there are empty beds that cannot be accounted for because there are no staff to take care of patients. We need additional publicly funded beds. We need more staff. We need more psychotherapy, more mental health supports for people here in Ontario who are battling with, with, with eating disorders. And it must be publicly funded because not every family in this province has $30,000, $50, dollars or $60,000 to spend for months of private care, Speaker. Please join me, everyone in this chamber, and let's fight for people who are living with eating disorders so they can live another day. Thank you. Okay. The next statement. It was a wonderful news to hear. Our Premier announced a $10.2 billion self-care deal this week alongside our federal government. This deal is meant to deliver an average of $10 a day child care by September 2025, and it could then come at a better time for the Ontario residents. Of I have been hearing from many working families in my riding of Mark and Thornhill that they have been struggling to keep up their cost of living. Child care costs went up to 300% under the previous Liberal government. This child care deal, along with other initiatives, from our government will help the people of Ontario make ends meet. Mr. Speaker, this is just one of the examples our government is reducing financial pressure on families in Ontario. The deals also include hiring new early childhood educators and supports, improved compensation for all registered early childhood educators working in licensed child care. Ontario is creating 86,000 child care spaces with more than 15,000 spaces already in place since 2019. As our Premier stated, our childhood educators deserve more money. Mr. Speaker, this is a great deal for all Ontarian parents. Under this program, reducing fees for an average of $10 a day in Ontario would save an average of $7,300 annually, annually per child, which will give parents the opportunity to afford child care for first time. Mr. Speaker, Thank you to the Minister of Education for his hard work. And you also, he also stated that we will be maintaining the Ontario Child Care Tax Credit Program and that will continue. That is a great news for many hardworking families. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Member for Markham Thornhill. Member Statements, Member for London North Centre. Speaker, the current epidemic of homelessness and lack of mental health supports in my community is hurting everyone. Residents, business owners, shoppers, visitors, and especially those who are struggling without supports are all suffering. When this government took power in 2018, they immediately cut promised mental health supports by $335 million. Speaker, they voted down my bill to provide powerful prescribed supports to those struggling with mental health needs. Since I was elected, I've called upon the government to provide emergency supports to address our homelessness and mental health crisis. People who are struggling are sent to London from all across southwestern Ontario, and London doesn't have the capacity to handle everyone. 
The government needs to step up. Shall Mayor Ed Holder wrote a letter in early March, and City Council is still awaiting a response from this government about SSRF supports. Shelters like Unity Project, London Cares, and Atlosa need your help now. Nick, in my writing, wrote to me about the human suffering seen on London streets, and he underscored how the province is not looking after its responsibility for health care and mental health. For too many years, governments have not built enough affordable and supportive housing. It's unacceptable to leave people this way. Speaker, it's time for the government to step up, build supportive housing, and provide meaningful assistance so that those suffering from homelessness and mental health can rebuild their lives and businesses and people can enjoy beautiful downtown London again. Thank you. For Mississauga Lakeshore. Thank you, Speaker. Work hard when you are young so you don't have to when you are old. From the days of when my Italian grandparents and parents first immigrated to Ontario, this was the saying that was passed down through our family's four generations. I'm sure many Ontarians, if not all, abide by this philosophy in their regular lives. However, we all know one special person who does not follow this set sentiment at this. It's the former mayor of the city of Mississauga, Hazel McCallion. Even though it was only a few short months ago when she celebrated her 101th birthday, Hazel continues to give back to her community, providing to us all that age is simply just a number. That is why I am honoured to rise today to recognize another accomplishment in her life, and that is that Hazel McCallion Walk for Health. The Hazel McCallion Walk for Health is a new fundraising event hosted by the Trillium Health Partner Foundation which takes place in my riding of Mississauga Lakeshore, with the support and funding of our government, along with the largest donation ever in Canadian history of $105 million by the Peter Gilgan Foundation. The community will soon have a chance to fundraise of their own for the new hospital. These investments will help increase the number of operating rooms and add over 350 additional new beds. Our government continues to promise the health and safety of all Ontarians is our number one priority, with what will be the largest hospital in Canadian history. This build will help ensure we keep the promise for just for the, not just for the Mississauga residents, but all Ontarians. Thank you. Member Statements. The member for St. Patrick. Thank you, Speaker. Today I rise to talk about protecting our environment and our green belt. The direction we need to be going in is protecting more Ontario's parks and expanding green spaces, expanding the green belt. On one hand, we need to do this work to combat climate crisis, the greatest threat to everyone. However, on the other hand, it is an opportunity to support communities and create jobs. One of the reasons our region and St. Catharines see so many visitors a year is because our community was built in harmony with our natural environment. Once this is paved over by a developer, it will be gone forever. I mean every word I say. I look at our shoreline, our community, and our green spaces throughout St. Catharines. One of the reasons it is so beautiful is because it, it is a priority to protect these spaces. We are already paying the price for the climate crisis. Our children and their children will pay this price in the future. We need a province with a bolder, clearer, fully committed plan for the environment. The last four years, too much time has been about making it about politics when it should have been about policy. I am proud to stand with a caucus that takes this seriously, and I hope all of the members in this chamber does as well. Yeah. The member for Glenberry, Prescott Russell. Merci, Monsieur le Président. C'est avec admiration et émotion. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. It is with admiration and emotion that I commemorate today the life of a remarkable woman from the PR region, and I was happy to know her, Miss Madame Monique Wolfiel, a peaceful warrior who passed away from a fifth cancer on January 22nd at the age of 77. Monique was an outstanding citizen, mother of four children, loving and present. 
teacher for 26 years. She dedicated her time to so many organizations and groups, especially for education and women. It's impossible to even summarize in the time allotted. Her countless qualities, including her generosity, her rigor, her integrity, and her courage, have marked hundreds of people throughout her life. In her eyes, life was a perpetual moment of learning, caring, wonder, and fulfillment. She lived this way until the very end. It is because of the determination of women like Monique that women today are exercising leadership in a variety of critical areas. Without their courage and rigor, we would certainly not have all our achievements. Russell, our home, the place where Monique significantly improved the quality of life for so many, a place she left in better shape than she found it. And for that, we are forever grateful. Elle a certainement laissé sa marque, et nous ne l'oublierons jamais. She left her mark, and we will never forget her. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The next statement, the member for Mississauga Malton. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. We are devastated. Family members of five killed in Brampton home fire plead for others to check alarms. This is a strong and compelling headline. Mr. Speaker, last week, an early morning fire claimed the lives of a family of five. Flames tore through their Brampton home around 2 a.m. Monday. We lost the lives that could have been saved. The whole community is in shock, but more heartbreaking is how it may have happened. Potentially, it was an active smoke alarm. Since March 1, 2006, it is the law for all Ontario homes to have a working home alarm on every story and outside all sleeping areas. Still, we keep losing lives to no or inactive smoke alarms in the house. In commemoration of the Great Chicago Fire every year, Fire Prevention Week is observed from October 3rd to 9th to raise fire safety awareness and help ensure every home and family is protected. Clearly, Mr. Speaker, this is not enough. Commitment from community and everyone is the only way to save these precious lives. In 2020, there were 10 fatal fires that left a total of 11 people dead, while in January 2021, 15 fires left 22 people dead. Half of these fires were preventable house fires. We could have saved those lives. Most fatal fires occur at night when people are sleeping. A working smoke alarm will detect smoke and provide an early signal to the presence of smoke so you and your loved ones can get to safety or prevent the fire from spreading. Through you, Mr. Speaker, I want to urge everyone to test home uh, smoke alarms regularly and replace them every 10 years. One life lost is too many. Let's all do our part and save lives. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The member for Hamilton Mountain. Uh, thank you, Speaker. Today I want to highlight a significant issue that is impacting my constituents of Hamilton Mountain, the affordable housing crisis. This is something that has been going on for some time, and it has certainly gone from bad to worse. Low and moderate income tenants are bearing the brunt of this crisis. The average rent for a one-bedroom apartment in Hamilton is now $1,486 a month. For families for two or three-bedroom units in the city can cost over $2,000. The housing system is failing our families. Now almost half of renters in Hamilton are living in unaffordable housing. This means that one in five renters are spending more than 50% of their monthly income on rent, making it difficult to afford food, transportation, and other necessities. Even worse, rent evictions are destroying the stock of affordable housing by driving up rent and displacing people from their homes. Several constituents have come to my office over the past year because of rent evictions. Each time I've expressed their concerns here in this chamber, the Premier and the Minister have still been silent. Tenants trying to find new housing face skyrocketing rental price, uh, costs and end up paying upwards of 20 per cent more every month for housing in Hamilton. Affordable housing is a crisis. We need to end tenant displacement and rent eviction and commit to developing policy that puts the health and housing security of our tenants ahead of the profit of landlords and developers. Member statements. The member for Perry Sound, Muskoka. 
Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Perry Sound Muskoka is most often known for its natural beauty and welcoming people. But what you might not know is it also home to world-class athletes. I want to offer my congratulations to the Olympic and Paralympic athletes from Perry Sound Muskoka who represented Canada in Beijing. Graham Ritchie from Perry Sound competed in cross-country skiing, posting an impressive fifth place in the men's classic style team sprint along with his teammate here in Canada's best ever finish in that event. He also finished 11th in the 4 by 10 kilometer relay and 34th in the men's sprint. I also want to congratulate Mark Idison, born in Perry Sound and skip of Canada's Paralympic wheelchair curling team, who brought home a bronze medal. Mark is now a three-time Olympic med medalist. Megan Oldham from Perry Sound earned a re remarkable fourth place finish in women's big air skiing after winning the qualifying round. She also finished 11th in women's slope style. Megan Farrell from Bracebridge finished 12th in women's snowboarding parallel giant slalom and just two days after coming home from Beijing, she won gold at the nationals. Finally, Colin Cameron from Bracebridge is bringing three bronze medals home to Perry Sound Muskoka. Colin finished third in men's sitting sprint para cross-country skiing in the four by two and a half kilometer mixed relay and in the men's long distance sitting cross-country event. Congratulations to the athletes from Perry Sound Muskoka and to, to all the athletes from Team Canada for overcoming the hurdles presented by the pandemic and representing our country with determination and sportsmanship. Job well done. Thank you very much.